Well, it's two o'clock, so it's time to get started. So welcome to the Science Integrating Across the Curriculum. Um, this is, webinar is being hosted by CS Cubed, um, Council of State Science Supervisor, um, specifically by um, the Committee Supporting Elementary Science. Um, and I welcome you. Introductions, and here they are. There's a number of us. I'm Amber McCulloch. I'm a, an associate member from Washington State. I'm Kathy Renfrew. I am an associate member from Massachusetts. Hi, everyone. I'm Alice Montgomery. I'm here from New Zella. I work on the teacher learning side of things with the company, and I'm a former elementary school educator myself. Hi guys, uh, good afternoon. I'm Carly Lovern. I am the Southeast Regional Director for National Geographic Education. Hi everyone, I'm Heidi Harlan. I'm a co-owner of ECA Science Kit Services and I'm on today to speak about uh, distance learning packs and distribution of those. So we're so excited that all of you could join all of us here in talking about elementary science. Um, so for those of you who um, are familiar with the association of uh, or the Council of State Science Supervisors, we have committee work. And Kathy and I co-chair the elementary science committee. And so um, obviously this is an issue that is near and dear to our hearts as um, former elementary teachers. And um, the number of ways the committee has done work to support elementary science. Um, one such way is this STEM teaching tool around integration as a strategy to support elementary science. So we included this here, so you're welcome to um, use this to further your learning, but it also was um, such a nice segue to um, the work that so many of our partners are doing and we get to hear about today. Yes. And really, that's the main event. So we and will not waste time and get to them. Kathy? Yeah, I was just going to say double that. I only want to say I'm going to quote Jim Short from the National Academies meeting the other day that it's time to revolutionize our thinking about elementary science. And with that, we'll hear from our partners. Great. Hi, everyone. Again, my name is Alice. I'm really excited to spend this next chunk of time with you exploring Newzella Science as a resource, a content resource, really um, perfectly designed to support elementary science education, especially when it comes to integrating science and literacy. Uh, I am on the teaching and learning team with Newzella. So my work is uh, working with educators across the country now in a completely virtual setting um, in order to support them in using Newzella in alignment with their instructional goals. I am a former elementary school educator. I taught primarily fourth grade in Northern California, which is where I live and work. Um, and I use Newzella with my students, mostly when it came to connecting them with texts that helped them to explore their curiosities and better understand what was happening in the world around them. Newzella is an instructional content platform. We take authentic content from the world's best publications. Um, that content is up to date. You'll find new texts published daily. It's differentiated in order to support student understanding across a range of reading levels. And it's a flexible resource that you might leverage to support student learning and teacher instruction now during our immediate distance learning needs, but also beyond. So you'll find 10 texts published daily on Newzella at multiple reading levels. You'll find these across topics connected to current events and not. And you'll also find robust subject specific resources. We're gonna take a look at the Newzella Science resource today to support standards-based instruction. That content is automatically differentiated for students, it can be accessed across a range of devices, including our New Zealand student app, which works offline. So if you're thinking about how to support students who have limited access to technology, know that there are resources available to your educators there as well. Teachers have full insight into both student activity on New Zealand, as well as overall performance based on some embedded formative assessment tools, which we'll take a peek at. So as a former elementary school educator, when it came to science instruction or all instruction, really, I found myself asking, where's the time? 
I imagine that's a question that resonates with you, that resonates with your educators as well. Limited time for science instruction can force this false choice, right, between hands-on learning and text-based learning. But we know that students really need both in order to engage in the work of science, understand why they're doing that, and understand what they're learning from it. So integrating science and literacy in the elementary school classroom is one way to account for more time um, for science teaching and learning and um, in order to achieve kind of higher expectations. Beyond the motivation of more time, um, there are many ways in which scientists incorporate literacy and communication into their daily practice. They read, whether it's to find out what other scientists have learned in designing their own research, whether it's to stay in the know about developments, review each other's work, they write, whether it's proposals for research, communicating their research, collecting data, and they engage. They collaborate through their research and they participate in discourse in order to present um, information. With Newzella Science, you can really get students learning about science while they're building key literacy skills through engaging accessible texts that inspire students to really see science in the real world. We're going to journey into New Zella Science in just a moment, but it's presented here on the slide. It's designed and organized to make it easy for teachers to find the perfect science content for their lessons, whether that's real world phenomenon text, whether it's STEM connections, or whether it's standards aligned performance tasks. Within New Zella Science, you'll find these science specific collections to support lesson planning and really help teachers address complex performance expectations associated with the NGSS. Um, you'll also find popular curricular materials aligned with Newzella content um, that you may already be using in your school and district. Newzella Science has um, texts and instructional supports that are aligned to the next generation science standards that allow teachers to easily integrate literacy and science and really support inquiry and hands on learning as well. In addition to the content, which is sequenced and aligned to the NGSS, teachers will find embedded science activities. This might look like quizzes, which are aligned with the science concepts presented in the text, or science write prompts, which are based on the CER framework and can really help students build key science skills. You'll find that texts have multiple activities, including some associated with key nonfiction literacy skills, ELA quizzes and write prompts vocabulary supports. Teachers can review and respond to all student work across content areas and really track their overall reading progress. Some quick hits of content here, some of the content and collection resources that you can expect to find, whether you're looking to support distance learning now or thinking ahead to what learning looks like next school year. Um, you'll see core NGSS phenomena collections for elementary. These provide curated sequenced text to really help break down the understanding associated with complex NGSS performance expectations. They have embedded lesson resources to facilitate teacher planning and instruction. In the middle, you see a great cross curricular resource perfectly suited for distance learning at home STEAM projects. These offer engaging hands on projects and experiments that families and students can easily do with materials to find at home. So that could be a great one to explore. And you'll even find resources for project based learning. Our PBL climate change collection helps students explore core real world climate problems and leverage engineering and design skills to propose solutions. So we have talked a lot about New Zella Science, but let's go ahead and take a look at it in action. We're going to zoom in to our NGSS phenomena collections for elementary, and we'll, look, we'll take a look at these resources on New Zella. All right, you should now see my New Zella homepage, and I'm clicked into, yep, New Zella Science. This is organized again to quickly surface content that matters to science instruction. Up at the top, we see current events texts um, that relate to the field of science. We see some quick links to distance learning resources. And as we scroll in, we'll also find these rows of regularly updated content responsive to what's happening in the world and really designed to be fun for students and inspiring for teachers. Here we see engineering in action, content that helps illustrate how engineers solve real world problems. 
Beside the homepage, you have this left-hand navigation bar that's going to allow teachers to quickly connect with the content that matters to their core teaching. Note that we have a distance learning collection um, specifically designed for science. Here you'll find virtual field trips as well as some highly engaging science activities that students can perform in different instructional settings. We're going to take a moment to zoom into our NGSS phenomena collections for elementary. I'm going to click into grade four since I'm a tiny bit partial to that grade level based on my previous teaching experience. When you click into a grade level, what you'll see um, is a set of units. So here we're taking a peek at the structure and function of organisms units. But if you scroll down, you'll see additional units in order to tackle those grade level standards. Units are broken into topics that really do build progressive understanding for students. So in this unit, we see that it starts by students exploring um, how plants and animals have unique parts that help them survive. Below that, we explore the five senses, how animals gather information from the world around them. And we take a look um, at information processing, how we process and react to that information that we gather. And each unit culminates with a performance task. Here, students are leveraging their understanding to evaluate and design solutions um, in order to solve problems that people are experiencing, either with gathering or processing that information. Each of these topics, like senses, is broken down into kind of lesson components. So senses includes five lessons, each kind of aligned with a sense. I clicked into the vision one here. Up at the top, we see student learning um, kind of objectives stated or learning goals, as well as some questions to keep in mind as they explore this unit in, in connection with essential questions that are presented um, at the topic level. So here students are focused on how vision helps organisms detect information and how it's different for some animals, why some can see at the dark, in the dark. If we scroll down, we see the content that really connects to um, these topics and that we're gonna leverage directly with students. And from the teacher side, we see a resources panel that provides um, a lesson resource that teachers can leverage to really design their instruction. I'm gonna open it full page so that we can look at the text here. Each lesson comes with this embedded resource. Here we have an overview that offers a quick hit of the focus as well as the time frame. We'll see the links to the text here. There's three pieces of content that students can engage with. And then we'll find activities for before, during, and after reading. Before reading is really gonna help activate student background knowledge, engage them. Here it's through a GIF of a pupil dilation, which is both creepy and fascinating. Um, and then we have some ready to go assignment instructions for the three pieces of content. These are gonna help students approach the text with a purpose in mind. Here they're highlighting differences between the ways in which owl's eyes and human eyes function. After reading, students have some ways to collaboratively demonstrate their understanding, whether it's using a three column chart here to kind of outline the details um, of the different animals that they explore or leverage a storyboard to design a model that shows how light entering the eye allows us to see. If we, click, if we quickly visit a piece of content, I'll click into this big questions text here. This is um, what it will look like for students, right? They'll uh, read any instructions that are present kind of digitally in order to engage with that content. Our nonfiction texts are available at up to five reading levels and will pre present to students at different levels based on their recommended reading levels on Newzella. Each text comes with embedded formative assessment tools, activities for both ELA and science. The ELA quizzes can help reinforce those crucial nonfiction reading skills. They'll be aligned to the same skills, but differentiated at different text levels. You'll find writing resources as well as vocabulary supports and science activities. So in addition to that lesson resource that has different active formative assessment tools, you'll see a quiz, again, differentiated to help students really reinforce their understanding of those science concepts as well as those science write prompts that can help those key science skills of um, you know, supporting claims made with evidence or evaluating claims made in the text. 
The last feature that I'll show here is a way for teachers and students to both stay connected during this time and also to really solidify that connection between science and literacy is that of annotations. Teachers and students can mark up the text as they read just by clicking and dragging, whether it's over a word, a sentence, a paragraph, you can highlight it and write in the margin. This may be a way for teachers to focus students in on domain specific vocabulary like nocturnal or it can be a way to support them in making a connection between both a language function and cross cutting concept like cause and effect. Teachers can share annotations with students and see all student activity from their teacher binder. If you're interested in exploring more about Newzella Science and our full suite of um, Newzella resources, you can visit this page. I'll share the link in the chat. This is our distance learning page um, in which you can really explore all the resources that are available and you can um, leverage the function up at the top in order to instantly unlock full complimentary access to our suite of products, including Newzella Science in response to COVID-19. You can check out these resources, explore them with your teachers between now and the end of the school year, um, totally for free. So I'll share that in the chat. And I'm excited to hear from you all if you have um, any questions or if anything has come up in the chat that I can respond to now. Yes, Alice, there are some questions from the chat. Um, first of all, uh, Lisa mentioned that she's really impressed with the environmental science, the Spanish articles. Um, that you guys offer. Um, Val uh, was uh, inquiring about how difficult it is to keep uh, science important in her district and school, and so several recommended the Nell Duke video. Um, Maya asked a question. When you say align to NGSS, are you referring to a three-dimensional alignment or to just one or more of the, di of the dimensions? That's a great question. So you'll find that the collections themselves, those core collections, which you can access from um, the left hand navigation here, you'll find them for grades three, five. These mm -hmm. are aligned mm -hmm. to three dimensional learning. The inclusion of the performance tasks is really going to help to achieve that rigorous level of learning. Newzella mm -hmm. texts range from levels two through 12. So though you can find content that aligns with disciplinary core ideas for second grade and below, the texts are really designed for reading to learn as opposed to learning to read. So you can certainly explore at the collection level resources to support three dimensional learning, as well as content that aligns to disciplinary core ideas. Great. Somebody else just asked, what is the lowest reading level for your Spanish articles? Yeah, so the lowest level of text that you'll find on Newzella overall is second grade. About 30% of our content is available in both English and Spanish, up to five reading levels in each language. And new texts are published daily that are available in those different languages as well. Great, thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions in the chat? I don't see any quite yet. Uh, what is Newzella considering the end of the year? Yeah, absolutely. My colleague Parla just responded in the chat. You'll have okay. you can have complimentary access to the full suite of products through June thirtieth. Great. Great. Thank you all. Thank you. Next, I believe we're hearing from National Geographic. All right. Um, I'm going to grab the screen from you, Alice. And thank you for all that. I'm really interested in the. Um, Owl pupil dilation GIF. I'm totally going to go look that up. That sounds awesome. Okay, my computer's working. Let's see. Can you guys see my screen? Thumbs up, maybe? Yeah, all right. Um, so, as I said in the beginning, I'm Carly Levern. I'm the Southeast Regional Director for National Geographic Education. And I'm joined by several of my colleagues um, on this webinar, and I'm going to ask them now to introduce themselves uh, in the chat so you can get to know who they are. We have some folks from some of the different regions, and I think I saw our citizen science expert is also on, so um, I'm really excited for you to get to know them as well. And um, at the end, I'll talk a little bit more about how you can connect with us. 
So uh, first and, and most importantly, it is Teacher Appreciation Week, uh, which is always a super big deal for us at National Geographic. Um, but I think we are all feeling especially grateful this year. Um, at National Geographic, we support explorers and pioneers and educators are absolutely pioneers. Um, in this moment, you are exploring uncharted territory uh, to ensure that your students continue to grow and learn. Um, we see how much you give of yourselves to your students and your communities. So first, before anything, we wanna say thank you for all that you do. Well. Sorry guys, I don't know what's going on here. Um, let me see if I can fix this real quick. Well, <clears throat> I was gonna say take this break and just say thank you to the Nuzella presentation that was very informative and went into depth. Um, myself, I've used, looked at it a little bit, but it certainly has intrigued me and I was a former fourth grade teacher and I totally am into those owls. So there you go. <laughs> okay, hold it. I'm sorry guys. I, I'm not sure what happened there, but I'm gonna try to do that again. It wouldn't be a proper meeting if we didn't have some technical. <laughs> right. That's right, that's <laughs> right. This is the new normal. Complete everyone trying to figure out <laughs> our Google site. You, and you just addressed it. So see, <laughs> it's okay. okay. I'm going to try to grab the screen again. Fingers crossed, everyone. Pray to the technology gods. And thank you, Carly, and your team for being here. Oh, we we're thrilled to be here. And worst comes to worst, I will just talk. <laughs> and. Uh, we could go with that. Let's see. All right. Can you can we see it? Thumbs up. Yes. Yay. Okay. Success. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is our mission at National Geographic. We use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. Um, we are a nonprofit, mission-driven organization. So all of the resources and programs I'm gonna tell you about today are offered for free. Um, at National Geographic, we, uh, what we call the explorer mindset is the foundation of everything that we do. We want kids to have the attitude, skills, and knowledge of a National Geographic explorer. So we want them to be curious and empowered. We want them to know how to observe and how to problem solve. And we want them to know about the world around them. Our learning framework sets out learning outcomes we want to see in di different age groups from pre-K through 12th grade. Um, and it's a way of thinking and learning that I think aligns really well with science education and with what you're doing as science educators. Um, we only have about 15 minutes today, so I won't be able to even get close to telling you about all of our programs and resources that we have available. Um, so what I want to do is encourage you to go to our homepage at natgeoed.org. Um, and check out all that we have to offer. This is a screenshot of the homepage. Um, and everything that I'm gonna talk about today is accessible from that homepage. So a lot of times people will go to nationalgeographic.com, which is also amazing and wonderful, but natgeoed.org is where all of the free stuff lives. Um, so be sure to go there and look for our um, education resources. And I want to just talk through uh, a little bit about what you're going to find on that page. Uh, the first section here is our classroom resources. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to talk about some of those today. Um, but that's where you will find our resource library. 
you can filter by grade level, by subject area, by keyword. You can filter the type of resource that you're looking for. So um, maybe you just need a really cool photograph of an owl uh, to go along with uh, your owl unit or maybe <laughs> a video of an owl. Um, so you can do that. Maybe you're looking for an entire unit. Um, uh, around uh, nocturnal animals. So we have everything from entire units, PBL units, to just assets that you can use to support um, the teaching that you're um, doing in the classroom. In that classroom resources section, we also have our mapping resources, and those are really cool. I encourage you to check those out. Um, we have interactive maps um, and also printable maps, which I, I find is really helpful. They're free to print. You can customize maps uh, for your classroom and print them out um, or send them to your students. Um, the second section there is our professional development section. So uh, our grants are found there, our teacher grants. You'll also find information on our fellowships, including some super cool travel fellowships. So if that piques your interest, be sure to go and uh, look for that. Um, it also has information on our online courses. And I want to um, pause just a minute to talk about those because they are registering right now and they'll start in um, kind of mid to late June, I think June uh, 24th. Uh, but there's several science focused options for summer learning for some of your members. Um, so we have a fantastic climate change, uh, teaching climate change in the classroom course. That's really amazing. We have inquiry based learning. Uh, we have data collection. Um, we have service learning. There are several um, online course options. Um, again, they are free. Uh, so if your members are looking to do some professional development this summer, we know we can't uh, get together in person, most likely. So this could be a good alternative uh, for them. Our student experiences section, so that includes our student competitions, which uh, some of you may know about, and also our Explorer Classroom uh, program, which I'm going to talk more about a little bit later. Um, and you can't see it in the screenshot, but at the very bottom of the homepage, there's a place to sign up for our monthly newsletter. Um, so you can stay up to date with all the resources and opportunities we're offering. Um, it's just once a month, so it's not super spammy, uh, but it has all of our latest announcements. Uh, so be sure to sign up for that if you haven't already. It's a great way to get information that you can push out to your members. Um, and of course, with the uh, global pandemic, um, uh, you know, we're in this unprecedented time. So in addition to our homepage, we also have a learn at home page um, at natgeoed.org slash learn at home. Uh, and it's, it's designed to be useful for both educators and for families who are trying to engage with their kids at home. Um, you can also get to this page, I should say, from natgeoed.org. Um, there's a link to our learn at home. Um, so on that page, you can see just a little bit of it here in that screenshot, but if you scroll down, you're going to find activities divided by grade level. Um, you'll also find um, curated uh, activities divided by subject area. So we have some on learning through play for our little ones. There's a section on infectious diseases, on storytelling, and a lot more that's on that learn at home. Uh, page. Uh, but I want to call out two specific programs that may be of particular interest to you as elementary science educators. Um, our citizen science resources and our explorer classroom program. So let's start with our citizen science. Uh, collection, which again, you can find from that Learn at Home page. And when you click on that, you're going to see an entire collection of citizen science uh, resources. Um, a quick note on citizen science, we are always encouraging people to get outside and to observe, um, but we want to encourage everyone to do these activities safely and in accordance with public health guidelines. So just a, a quick caveat on that. Um, 
uh, during this pandemic. Um, but you'll see lots of cool things in this collection. There's um, a really cool app called the Debris Tracker where you can track a litter that you find. Of course, we're not encouraging people to go pick up litter <laughs> right now because of, of the pandemic, but you'll find lots of, of really cool things there. Um, but I want to focus in on one of the options uh, that you'll find there that's uh, pretty good for these times, and that's the backyard bioglitz. Um, learners can do this at home, uh, so that's uh, one thing that's, that's attractive for now. I imagine since you're science educators, many of you are likely familiar with bioblitzes and have, have done some in your communities. Uh, but uh, basically, bioblitzes use citizen scientists to identify species in a given area. And there are several ideas on the Backyard Bioblitz research, resource page. There is a no tech option where learners can observe what they draw. It's like a little sheet they can fill out um, that doesn't involve a device at all. Um, but there are also some super cool free apps that I wanna tell you about. Um, the first is iNaturalist. And I'd love to hear from folks in the chat if you have used iNaturalist. I'm guessing probably some of you have. Um, it's amazing. Whoops. Oh, I think, I'm sorry, y'all. I think what's happening is I'm trying to look at the chat and I can't do two things at once. So let me, uh, um, all right, I'm gonna stop share and then grab it again, but I'll keep talking about iNaturalist. Um, it's amazing. Mary Ford, who I think is on this uh, call is our iNaturalist expert. Um, so she can tell you all about that. Carly, this is Mary. While you're grabbing that, I'll just say, a quick uh, um, way to distinguish between whether you should use iNaturalist or Seek is that Seek is- Mary, Yeah, I'm gonna talk about Seek in just a minute. Perfect, perfect. I see, I'm just, I see people talking about it in the chat. Oh, cool, yeah. Go ahead, Mary. So iNaturalist is, is great for kids 13 and over. And uh, for anyone, anyone who uh, we're protecting through COPA requirements or protecting privacy, Seek is a great um, application. So Car Carly is gonna show you how Seek works. Um, and both of them are wonderful for classroom use, but um, I think for, for littler kids, Seek has really been a nice addition to what, what we have to offer. Um, and if you have questions about either of those, ask Mary, she is a guru. Um, so just finishing up real quick on iNaturalist, um, the, I personally love it. I'm guessing a lot of you have used it. Um, my, my family kind of gets mad at me because when I'm on hikes, I'll want to stop and take pictures of all the flowers. And you can get these cool little macro lenses to put on your phone to take pictures of tiny organisms you find. Um, it's very cool, but it allows you to make research grade observations, which are then automatically mapped and they contribute to scientific research in the area. <clears throat> so it's just a really neat, um, uh, again, a free app uh, to use for anyone. So now let's talk about SEEK. Uh, since you are elementary science educators and most of you have an elementary focus, um, SEEK, like Mary was saying, is uh, likely a good option for you to use uh, with your students. It is from iNaturalist, it is also free, and it's specifically for kids under 13. Um, so SEEK will show you uh, lists of common organisms in your area. And I think probably the coolest thing about it, you can kind of see it in this GIF in the middle, but it will automatically make recommendations on what the organism is as you zoom in. So you can kind of see there from the GIF that it's going from, um, you know, from family to genus to species and making recommendations. Um, so that is a really cool option. Um, Seek is also gamified, which is great for our little ones, so they can participate in challenges, they can earn badges, and uh, fun things like that to engage them. Uh, their data is not mapped onto iNaturalist, um, 
so uh, like Mary said, that, that means it's COPA compliant, but it's still a great way to get kids outside um, and encourage them to observe the world around them. Okay, so the last thing I wanna tell you about is Explorer Classroom. Um, also accessible from our Learn at Home page or from natgeoed.org. Uh, Explore Classroom is a live video event that connects National Geographic Explorers uh, with learners from all over the world. And we have really ramped up this program uh, during the pandemic and we're now holding it at a minimum every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern. We're, we also add other special events. So if you uh, check the Explorer Classroom page, you can see all the different events that we have. Uh, it's free to join. Um, I'd, I'd love to see in the chat if anyone has been to one yet. I'm not gonna look at the chat <laughs> because it'll freeze my screen, um, but hopefully you have. Uh, and if not, I cannot even tell you how much fun it is. Um, there are lots of events on animals, of course, on the environment, on storytelling. Um, just this week, we've had uh, an Arbor Knot which is an ecologist who does these canopy walks in, in trees that was really fun. Uh, we've had a marine scientist focused on plastic pollution. Uh, we had a session on our Mount Everest expeditions. We had a session on tracking animals. And um, I, I mentioned we've started adding special events. So we have uh, some events that are specific to our little ones. We call it our littles session. So that's for our uh, pre-K through second grade learners, specifically for them. Um, we have some events that are specific to high school. Uh, we've had events with ASL interpreters. So there's just lots of really, really cool things um, as part of that program. And the way they work, just to give you an idea, if you haven't seen one, is that the Explorer gives a 15 minute presentation presentation on their topic, so it's pretty brief, and then fields questions from students, some online and some in the chat. Um, all of the Explorer classrooms are archived, so uh, you can go to our YouTube page to watch those videos if there's a topic that's uh, of particular interest to you or your students. And along with each of those events, you also get a guide Again, that's free and you can download, but it gives recommendations on extensions um, with that video to, to activities, to videos, and other types of learning around the topic of uh, the Explorer Classroom. So, um, and again, all that is free and it's just, it's a ton of fun and a great way for students to hear uh, from experts on uh, really cool topics that maybe they're interested in. Um, so finally, I want to uh, let you know if you are on social media, please follow us and interact with us and all of the really incredible members of the National Geographic community. We're at Nat Geo Education on Twitter and Facebook. Um, I'm quite sure I'm over time with all of my technical issues, but um, I do want to give you my email there. And um, hopefully you've met some of my colleagues uh, in the chat. Um, we would love to connect with you. Um, so we, my colleagues and I are available to do webinars for your members at the state level. Um, and we'd love to hear other ideas you might have about how we could share National Geographic resources with your members. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. And I guess if there are questions, Someone read me. Oh, your colleagues <laughs> have been amazing. There have been there have been some questions, um, but your your colleagues were answering those in chat and sharing about um, some of the resources. So thank you so much for for sharing that. And we will have time at the end for questions too. Okay, so I'm up. Is that right, Amber? Yes, Heidi. Okay. It's all yours. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Can everyone see it? Hopefully. Yep, perfect. 
Cool. Um, okay, so I'm Heidi Harlan. I'm a co-owner of ECA Science Kit Services, and we're sort of a behind the scenes kind of company. We're the people in the blue jeans. And what we typically do is, um, you know, without a pandemic, our normal role with school districts is they use a science kit with that has materials, teachers use up the materials, and then our service takes it from there. We come in and we pick up the kits, we clean them, we replenish them, we restock them, we add in anything that's teacher supplied, we prep it all to a ready to teach configuration, and the next time it's needed in district, we send it back out. Um, that's our core business. But what I wanna to talk to you guys today about is how the systems in our core business um, have allowed us to pivot to support districts during this time with distance learning. Um, like I said, we're behind the scenes. So our focus is materials and we don't create curriculum. We don't sell curriculum. Um, we are a material service company. And so while we never thought the need for distance learning or at home packets or student packets or teacher packets, um, we never thought there'd be a need for that. The systems that we have in place were designed to handle the details of subkitting and creating lesson bags and customizing kits for school districts. So when the need did surface, we were ready for it. And we've been supporting our client districts with these at-home distance learning packs. Um, we've made over 35,000 packets and delivered them. And I'm gonna talk about distribution. Um, and by Monday, we'll have made, packed, and distributed over 50,000 packets to students. Um, so I, when I was preparing for this presentation, I was trying to put myself in your shoes and think about some of the stuff you guys as educators are navigating at, at the teachers, district level. Um, it's such a, there's a big ask of you guys right now. And our, our role as a company is small, um, but mighty. And so I was thinking, you know, you guys are probably navigating a lot of these operational questions of how to get, how to prepare these resources. There's a lot of content out there online, but how do you prepare that? How do you get those resources to students? How do you distribute Chromebooks? How do you pick up Chromebooks? How do you have that accountability in place? Um, and so that's what we do as a company. And perhaps we're uh, an ingredient that you could add to your planning, whether it's now or in the future, for distance learning or material support. Um, so I'm gonna talk to you about the distance learning packets and what that all means, but I'm then gonna talk to you about the infrastructure of our systems. And you're gonna hear a lot about the core business of the refurbishment service that we offer. Um, but I just, that's related to, well, certainly you're welcome. We'd love to have you as a client for our, our typical service. Um, but also we just want you to know that we have the systems in place for this distance learning packs and we want to show you the detail that we can get down to. So I am going to drop a link in the chat and I'm hoping that this doesn't um, disrupt my presentation, but I'm going to drop the link in the chat. This is a link where you can get the FAQ, the frequently asked questions. We've only been doing it for you know four or five weeks now, but the questions we've been getting asked, I'm just gonna focus on the top four for this presentation. So what is included in a distance learning pack? The flexibility of our system allows us to totally customize it for you. It can be all subjects, it could be science. I mean, that's our focus here at ECA, but because of the situation, we have districts who have us creating packets that include everything from ELA to social studies to dance, music, art, theater, physical education. So it can be all grades, all subjects. It could be grade level packets. It could be student packets. It could be lesson bags. So it's totally customizable. And I'll actually show you our system so you can see how we can handle that. Um, I also get asked if the packets are for students or teachers. It's both. Um, it can be for either students or teachers. And we are now getting questions about um, PD training. So if there's virtual PD training, we've been asked to start making packets to send to the teachers participating in that training. Um, and we can do that too. We can do summer camps, we can do um, summer school. So really it's a very flexible system. Um, we never thought it could be used this way, but we're really happy that we can step up and, and deliver for this. So how are packets distributed? Huge logistical question, right? Um, so there's three options. We, I'm gonna show you actually, um, but there's three options. We can deliver to each and every student. 
we can deliver to um, multiple locations in the district. Some districts have family services centers that are available and open during this time. That seems to be the most popular option right now that we've seen. And then the other way is we can deliver to one location. That's easy, that's simple. And I'm gonna show you real quick. This is a typical crate in our labels and in our typical service, we deliver to the teacher's name. I threw my name in there just for um, anonymity purposes, but we can deliver to the teacher, but that part of our system has allowed us to actually deliver to each and every student and also provide the tracking for that so that you can have visibility of did it get there, where is it, et cetera. Um, also, we keep a um, record of the pacing. So when we deliver kits to districts, the district tells us they need to start teaching by this date. And so all of those schedules are put on a customized website that we designed for the district and they only have access to it, it's just for them, and they can see their schedules 24 seven. And then we also add in the pickup date for our um, full service clients. This is just a quick picture of one of the packets we've done. We printed everything, um, and so we have that capability as well. This is a sixth grade grab and go packet, and it's all subjects, that top subject is ELA. Um, and then this is just a box when we delivered it out to the district. They wanted five packets in a box. We put the grade level on the outside, and then we obviously did our system here. It just hasn't been the ship ticketed yet. So, but that's, an, that's just a sample. Another question we get is turnaround time. Um, obviously for those districts interested right now, it's about a week to two weeks, um, depending on what your ask is and um, how, who we're delivering to, and there's a lot of variables to it, but the turnaround time has been about one to two weeks so far. And we have the capacity to do so much more than um, we did 50,000, but we're capable of doing hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these to all states. So I linked, I sent the link in the chat. Hopefully you guys got that and you can download that PDF. Um, it's just a quick reference as we're kind of rolling this out as this need is developing, whether you're planning now or in the future. Um, so what I wanna show you now is uh, our infrastructure and our systems. So really quick backstory of how our company started. This is my dad um, and my dad and I are the co-owners and my dad started the company when my older sister, Heather, she came home from school and she told him that science was boring and for boys. And he was like, well, wait a minute, what's going on? Why aren't you curious about science? And what he did is he got a grant from the NSF and he, he went around the country and what he realized was the hands-on, the project-based learning, of course we have the NGSS now, it's the most engaging way for students to learn, to have those experiences. And teachers love to teach this way, but all of the burden falls on the teachers. I think Alice from New Cellus said, you know, um, during your presentation, you said, where is the time? And I think that's a common um, remark you're gonna hear is there's no time. Teachers don't have time to prep materials. They don't have time to run out and go to Walmart and go get the materials. The storage space is a huge deal in, in districts. Uh, all of those burdens, all of that headache, our service takes out of it. And when I say we prep stuff, we literally, we cut the aluminum foil into four by four squares. We put the lines and the dots on the cups for the teachers. In a kit, you might, teachers would typically get this. We, we sub kit it down into student bags and then you just pass out the student bags. So we, we really, we really prep it to a ready to teach configuration and we add in all those teacher supplied items in our core service. But how that relates to the distance learning packs is we can pre-assemble things for parents and students. So really ask for the universe and you know, we'll let you know what we can do. And typically we can do it for you. We support all um, curriculums that school districts use. If you're using a commercial program like Amplifier or FOSS, um, you buy the kits from the company and then you hire us independently to manage those materials for you and we just put you into our system. If you're using open source, uh, we actually build the kits from the ground up. So maybe some of you are using open Syed and you've had to run out and get all the materials. Just call us, we have kits available um, that align to that program. So I've starred some of the uh, open source, but if you don't see a program up here, just ask, we service a ton more and we service all the additions. So first edition, second, third, NGSS. So just ask and um, 
So how do we how do we do this? I'm going to actually show you the warehouse tour. <laughs> this is a very old video, so I apologize because it's not a at the point. So I'm going to actually mute it. It's not great quality uh, sound, but this is one of our warehouses. We have another warehouse down in Florida where we do the live animals, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And so this is um, the, un oops, sorry. This is the unpack, okay? We can unpack a kit in about a minute, minute and a half, depending on how many items are in it. We are only touching a kit from start to finish, from when we get it in the door to when we have to send it back out for about 15 minutes but a lot of stuff happens in the meantime so that we're prepared to be that efficient with our service and the turnaround. When my dad started the company, there were only database systems available that allowed you to take an order and deliver an order. But for us, we had to take an order, deliver it, pick it up, reuse the inventory, repack it and send it back out. And so my dad, created our database. It's called the Kit Pack database system. It's proprietary. And um, it allows us to have that flexibility so that we can customize, we can handle all of these additions, and we can reuse the materials so that we're not being um, wasteful. And we can keep the costs down for the school districts. Okay, so the team leader here, he's calling out the items. Um, and the team member here is taking the inventory. Here's where you're gonna hear a little bit about our core service, a little bit more. These team members in the back here are actually just grabbing it and sorting it. You'll notice they're not counting it at this point. We count it in a later stage of the process. We do not nickel and dime the client. We, if something is missing, we automatically replace it. It's part of our service fees. We calculate that after about 12 uses, we're gonna to have to replace everything. So we know we're gonna to have to replace it the fees are in there. If anything is ever missing, we just automatically replace it. So the next time it's used in district, it's 100% complete. However, we do make note of what is missing and we let the teacher know, hey, if you could look around your classroom, this, is, this wasn't included, could you put it in the next kit? We typically get most things back and it also helps to go to some accountability that we are taking inventory and the teachers now know that we are. Okay, so the let's see here okay so now he is just examining it seeing if any of the font stop clips are bent and if it's it needs to be repaired or um, recycled so we can pack a kit in about a minute and a half to two minutes and as you can see he's got a um, scanner that's tied into our mainframe it's on his hand and he's scanning the items and that is actually monitoring the inventory that we're putting in but I'm gonna actually unmute it so you can hear. Can you hear that bell? It'll, it'll do it again. So that bell is a happy sound. That is not a happy sound. So what happened is he went out of sequence. So not only does it monitor our inventory, it monitors the packing sequence so that it's packed the same way every time. And this is important because teachers need the materials when they start teaching. Classroom time is very precious and it is way too expensive for us to have to overnight a sleeve of cups. So it's gotta be 100% correct when it goes out the door. So we store the kits when they're not being used to free up classroom space for the teachers. Um, and then we deliver with our own trucks and our own drivers for quality control purposes. Um, okay, I'm gonna jump back. Okay, hopefully this is back up now. Um, so I mentioned we're in 10 states, and, or maybe I didn't, but we are in 10 states. However, during this time we have um, started working with the USPS, the United States Postal Service, to support states outside of the 10 states we're in. We're mostly in the Midwest and the East Coast with a little bit down in the South. Um, but we can now support any state that we're not in with um, the USPS. And um, we've also partnered with a national printing company to help us take on some of those printing needs. So we really are trying to be a one-stop shop for districts during this time, or should this need ever arise again. So live materials, and this is the last section I'm really gonna talk about. We've been getting a lot of requests for live materials, particularly butterflies and um, 
fiddler crabs and tadpoles have been really popular. Um, <clears throat> and so with our core business, we do the live materials. Teachers never have to think about mailing in another coupon. Um, in fact, when all the schools started closing, we were able, in the 10 states we're in, in 20 minutes, we had all deliveries for live, postponed, delayed, and then we were on the phone proactively calling our clients saying, when would you like us to start it back up? And then it allowed us to immediately communicate with our production and operations team so that it, it, we didn't have to charge the districts for stuff we didn't deliver. Um, and it took one thing off their plate during a time where they had so much to, to work through. So live materials, we do this for at home. I'm actually gonna show you a picture of my nieces and my nephew. This is my sister's kids, the sister that thought science was boring and for boys, this is her kids. She's got four kids and we sent them um, a kit here and it was for eco, eco columns and butterflies. And so here's some caterpillars and the butterflies and they're set up and they're loving it. And we can do this for, we can deliver to the students or the teachers if they wanna do it virtually. Um, and then here's the eco columns. And so you can see the isopods and the aquarium for the guppies. And we've sent out the soil and the gravel and the aquariums and the two liter bottles we, we cut for our district. So it's all pre-cut for them to assemble. Um, and so to summarize, we are here as a resource. We have the infrastructure, we have the systems, we have the inventory, and we are here to support teachers and students. And if we can be helpful, um, please reach out. And here is, I gave you both my, uh, my contact info and my dad's contact info. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you very much. And I'll open it up to questions. Thanks, Heidi. We do have a few in the chat. Oh, good. Great. Michelle, do you want to go? Uh, yes, okay. yes. Okay, a few questions. Um, is it possible to buy one piece um, for a kit? Yes. If you want okay. to, we're, we don't typically do that, but during this time we are opening that up as a possibility, yes. Okay, great. Um, how are your dissection kits prepared? It depends on the curriculum you're using. Um, we have a team that goes through each and every curriculum, and so they go lesson by lesson. And if it's a commercial program that um, you have purchased the kit, we um, make sure to uh, keep the integrity of the kit that you own in place. And so we would follow the instructions from the teacher guide. If it's an open um, education resource, we go through it, we test it out. And so it just depends on the curriculum that you're using. We have, um, I know off the top of my head, we just added, this is, this is, the, is such a weird family business. We have Sheep's Heart, we have um, eyeballs, we have owl pellets, we have um, dissection kit tools. Um, so if you're interested in that, just reach out and I can give you the list. Great. A couple more questions. What do you do with the package container and does the district own the kit? Yeah, so we have a couple models. Um, so let me take the second question first. So does the district own the kit? We have districts that do it. There's two options. Um, you can uh, buy the kit and the district owns it and you buy it from the publisher or you if it's an open education resource you can buy it from us and then you own it and we we can manage it um, there's also the option to rent it so for a lot of the open education resources we have a rental model um, EIE is a, a publisher fantastic program they are working with us to develop a rental model for their curriculum FOSS has a rental model with us. Um, they call it the subscription model. You get their kits with our service. It's a package. Um, so there are some available rental models out there. And the second part of the question, Michelle, can you remind me? Uh, so um, what do you do with the package container? Okay, so there's two parts to that answer. So let's say you buy a FOSS kit and they come in those like sturdy boxes, the cow boxes we call them. We actually will put them into the durable gray buckhorn containers because um, the buckhorn containers can handle the transportation of back and forth and the dynamic pressure on the truck. They're much more durable for transporting. With the cow containers though, we actually repurpose them and use them for like our goods and our inventory storage. We are not a fancy company, so we actually reuse that too. And typically we reuse most items in the kit as well. Right. Okay. A few more, one more question, I think. Okay. Yeah. 
yeah, when, one more. Shari was wondering if you can do 100 packs for teacher PD, and another person asked where to find the state list on your site. Okay, so I think the two questions are, can we, what, what's our volume and how fast we can turn it around, I think is really where they're going with that. Yesterday, we did 17,000 at-home packets. So we have the capacity to do huge volumes of this, and those packets are being delivered Monday. Um, and then the state site, oh, sorry, did I just drop off? I'm sorry. Nope, nope I just stopped the sharing. Oh, okay, okay. Um, this, were you tired of seeing my dad? <laughs> um, I love that. So the states that we're in, I can send you a list. I don't know that I have it on there. We can service any state. That's the simple answer. We are mostly in the Midwest and East Coast. So Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York. Um, we're going to be working in Los Angeles, hopefully. And I'm forgetting South Carolina, North Carolina. So we're all over. So just let us know where you are and we'll make it work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and there's, there, you know, feel free to check the chat to see if there's any other um, questions still remaining. Thank you to all of you who are able to join. Thank you for everyone who shared. Really amazing. And um, like I said, I'm a former elementary teacher, but I really wish I was not former because the resources are so tremendous that um, I could take them and use them right now. For those wondering, this was recorded and will be available on the CS Cube website. The uh, link is in the chat window. So um, before we end the meeting, take a look at the chat, make sure you either hit the link, copy and paste it, save it for later, so that you can access this at a later time. Um, it's been awesome to see so many people here. My cousin's on here, so that was fun. <laughs> uh, former colleagues. Um, it's, it's yes, great I'm very, so excited to see the people we had. That I'm very excited because the, my passion for elementary science is just, it's, it's huge. And so to see all these people interested is just so heartwarming. <laughs> Amen. And with that, I think we'll, again, thank you all for joining the jazz hands. Goodbye. Hi, Savannah. Thanks all. Have a great rest of your day, whatever time zone you're in, and have a wonderful weekend.